can you feel the anticipation have you been waiting for a whole week for this to happen here we go again well hello there long time no see hi everybody this is mr duncan in england how are you today are you okay i hope so are you happy i really really hope so here we go again we are back live on the internet live across youtube it is friday may the 5th we are now into the month of may so may has arrived just five days into may how has the month been for you so far has may been a good month so far for you it has for me i have been taking it easy over the past week i went over to see my mother during the week i went over to the place where i was raised the town of stafford now many people keep asking mr duncan we never ever see where you used to live where you were raised as a child can you please show us some photographs of your hometown so here we go this is a photograph actually i took this during the week when i was over in the place i used to live i was raised in the town of stafford stafford now many people think that it's stratford it is not stratford that is a different place altogether i was raised in a place called stafford and there is a view taken in the local park in stafford and that is victoria park in the place where i was raised as a child i wasn't raised in that park just in case you are wondering no <laughs> nothing like that i was born in stafford raised in stafford and that is my hometown but of course now i don't live in stafford i live in a place called much wenlock and that is where i am broadcasting to you live from right now at five minutes past two o'clock on a friday afternoon as i've already mentioned it is the fifth day of may isn't the year going quickly don't you think it's going by so quickly we are already into may the weather today well this morning i woke up to the most glorious view would you like to see the view from my house this morning here it is so this is the view that greeted me this morning when i woke up looking out towards shrewsbury you can see in the distance you can see some buildings in the far distance that is actually shrewsbury and you can also see some of the landscape you can see lots of rapeseed that yellow color is actually rapeseed growing in the fields so there it was this morning a glorious morning now during the past few mornings at around about five o'clock in the morning i have been woken up by one particular sound and that is the sound of bird call now during the late spring and summer months quite often the birds will sing all together when the sun rises so as it starts to get light outside all of the birds will sing together we call it the dawn chorus have you heard of that dawn chorus and that means the moment when all of the birds sing as the sun rises so during the past few mornings i have been woken up by the dawn chorus now this morning i was planning to get up early to record the birds singing at the start of today can you believe it this morning the birds decided that they weren't going to sing 
So I went to a lot of trouble this morning to wake up very early at around about five o'clock in the morning. And the birds, can you believe it, decided this morning that they weren't going to have a dawn chorus. They were going to be really awkward. So sadly, there was no dawn chorus for me to record this morning, which was very annoying. So maybe I will have some luck next week. Let's just see what happens there, shall we? For those who have just joined me, welcome. It is Mr. Duncan. That is my name. You can call me Duncan if you like. And I teach English on YouTube. And I have done so for over 10 years. You can find my YouTube channel right here. This is the address. This is where you will find me all the time on YouTube. There are over 500 video lessons. And of course, don't forget, you can catch me live every single Friday as well. Two o'clock. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you because this is the live stream that I'm talking about. So don't forget, you can catch me live every single Friday. And here I am right now proving it to you. So we saw the view from the window this morning. What about the live view outside? Let's have a look right now. So this is the outside of the house right now at this very moment in time. And a little bit later on, I will be going outside to give you some flash words and some flash phrases as well. So there it is, the live view at the moment. That is actually live outside in my garden and a little bit later on I will be going outside to talk to you live. Ooh. Did you see the blackbird then? A blackbird just flew by. <laughs> of course the birds are very busy at the moment because many of them now are raising their little chicks so many of them have fledglings to look after. Of course as beautiful as nature is, there is always a downside to nature. So looking at the birds and the trees and all of the landscape, it's very nice. But there are some downsides to nature, especially this time of the year when there are lots of tiny fledglings, young birds flying around. Of course, I am talking about the predators, the predators birds that prey on other birds especially the young birds in this area where i live there are lots of birds of prey lots of predators <laughs> including buzzards we have many buzzards around here flying around you can normally see them in the afternoon circling in the sky looking for their next meal and of course we have magpies as well magpies are very mischievous birds so we do have lots of magpies also flying around looking for something tasty to eat so besides the nice things in nature there are also some not so nice things and at this time of the year, when all of the young chicks are flying around, they are still getting used to being alive and getting used to the surroundings. And of course, you might find that there will be many predators ready to swoop in and take the young chicks away. I know it's not very pleasant, is it? But sometimes nature is rather unpleasant. So coming up today, we have lots of things. We have some excerpts from some of my English lessons. Now, way back in 2014, can you remember that far back? Can you remember 2014? It was three years ago. So yes, it was a long time ago. I did a series of English lessons called Mr. Duncan's May Days. And I did a series of May Day lessons way back in 2014. And today I thought it would be nice to show you one of those May Day lessons, because, of course, we are into the month of May. May 
has arrived so a little bit later on i will show you one of my may day lessons i did a series of lessons during the month of may in 2014 also we have an excerpt from one of my full english lessons there are lots of full english lessons on my youtube channel 25 full english lessons to watch so much information to give you today i have such a lot to talk about and don't forget you will also have a chance to get involved as well later on when i open the live chat yes if you are a newcomer here let me just explain that you will have a chance to type your messages to me live it's incredible isn't technology amazing i think so so the live chat will be open at around about about 2 30 about half past two is that okay i hope so talking of technology how long do your electrical devices last for how long do they last for before they <coughs> break before they break down and what is the oldest piece of electrical equipment that you have now when i say electrical equipment or devices i mean household things like washing machines or maybe toasters maybe kettles or maybe your stove so how long have your or how long do your electrical devices tend to last and what is your oldest electrical device the oldest one later on today i will be showing you my oldest electrical device something that uses electricity that i've had for a very long time now the reason why i mention this is because this week i went to see my mother and when i arrived at my mum's house my mum said that her kettle had <coughs> broken and the disappointing part of that story is that i only bought that kettle for my mother last year i actually bought it last year for my mother's birthday a year ago and already the kettle <coughs> has broken it has stopped working so my question is what is the oldest electrical appliance that's a great word isn't it appliance so we can say that something that you use in your everyday life something that carries out a task or does something for you and is powered by electricity we can call it a device or an appliance appliance excuse me i just had to clear my throat then so that is a question coming up today also here's a good one here's a great question how well do you get on with your neighbors oh yes how well do you get on with your neighbors we all have them we all live next door to someone some of us live next door to many people some of us don't but we all have someone nearby who lives next to us or near us they are of course our neighbors how well do you get on with your neighbors another question must be how often do you see your neighbors do you see your neighbors very often and do you speak to them now the reason why i ask this is because i've noticed a strange trend in society certainly here in england that people don't talk to their neighbors as much as they used to i don't think we are as friendly as we used to be towards our neighbors so there is another question to ask you today how friendly are you towards your neighbors do you see your neighbors very often do you see them at all and if you do see them do you speak to them and have you ever had a fight 
with your neighbour? Have you ever fallen out? Have you ever had a disagreement with your neighbours? Ever? Has it ever happened? You will have a chance to tell me later on because we will be opening the live chat in around about 11 minutes time. Also, don't forget today at three o'clock, I will be going into my kitchen to make a drink and I hope you will join me as well. So let's have a look at one of my May Day lessons. This is one of a series of lessons that I made in 2014 and I did these as a way of celebrating the month of May. So I thought, hmm, let's show one of those May Day lessons today. <laughs> When water freezes, it turns to ice. It becomes solid. When heat is applied to ice, it begins to melt. The ice melts. If an object is frozen in ice, it also becomes solid. If heat is applied to the frozen object, then it begins to thaw. It thaws out. There are some idioms and phrases in English that concern ice. For example, break the ice. The phrase break the ice means to begin something or start something off. Normally, this is used in social situations. If you approach a person you have never met before, then you will need to have something to say to them. You need to break the ice. A party needs a starting point. It needs something to break the ice. If you are going out on a date with someone, then you need an interesting subject to talk about. Small talk can be a form of this ice breaking. It is a method of getting a conversation and perhaps even a little bit more underway. Another idiom using ice is to be on thin ice. This phrase means that a person is pushing their luck. Someone is in danger of coming to harm because they are going too far with something. If you keep pushing your luck by taking risks, then we can say that you are on thin ice. We can also say that a person is skating on thin ice. This has a similar meaning. It means that if you keep doing the same thing, then you will come to harm. Another phrase is cold as ice. We can describe a person as being cold as ice if they have no feelings for others. This person seems to have no emotions. A person who hurts other people emotionally without showing any guilt or remorse can be described as being as cold as ice. To receive no positive emotion or response from a person or a group of people can be described as icy or frosty. He greeted me with an icy stare. The reception they gave me was frosty. Then there is see you on the ice. This expression means see you out there. You might say this before a performance to another person who is also taking part. The final ice phrase is don't cut no ice. This phrase means that a person or thing has no influence. Your mind cannot be changed and your decision will not be altered. Your kind words and excuses don't cut no ice with me. I have no idea what you're trying to say to me. I really love technology. It's so useful, not to mention cool.
The only problem with it is that there are so many words to learn and remember. The formal word for these phrases is terminology. Some of these words and phrases seem to make no sense and are hard to understand. We can also use the word jargon to describe these phrases. Many computer experts use jargon when they are explaining something. The average person will not understand what they are talking about. Could you please explain it to me simply without all the jargon? A person who is not familiar with a certain subject can be described as a layman. To simplify a subject can be described as putting it into layman's terms. In computing, there is a lot of jargon to understand. This is one of the reasons why people are put off or discouraged from learning about computing. Words such as bits and bytes, megabytes and terabytes, firewalls, bitmap, overwrite, boot, reboot, copy and paste, drag, encryption. What is the difference between software and hardware? The list goes on and on. Some examples of computer jargon. Firewall. In computing terms, a firewall is a system that filters information as it enters a computer. A firewall limits the information and the ability to access the computer. This prevents unauthorized users from accessing the computer and its contents. A firewall can be in a piece of software or hardware. A computer has the ability to store information. This is done digitally. Digital information consists of a series of ones and zeros. The computer is a digital machine, as it can only read information in this form. A computer reads information as one being on, and zero being off. This type of information can also be called a binary system. Translated, it means a twofold signal. The simple construction of this system allows information to be stored in huge amounts from the small kilobyte, which is a thousand bytes, right up to the mind-blowing yottabyte, which is a trillion trillion bytes, or to put it another way, a septillion bytes. Yes, there is such a word as septillion. To show you just how large a septillion is, counting up to it from one would take millions of years. I have received an email from Lena, who is following me in Russia. Lena asks what the word chav means. Well, Lena, I'm not sure where you heard this word, but it is not one that is used outside the UK. The word chav is a noun that refers to someone in their youth who behaves in an unsociable or loutish way and often wears fake or genuine designer sports clothes. It is a very derogatory and offensive term that emerged in the 1990s. To call someone a chav would be seen as appearing better than the subject. It is not used much these days, but references to it can still be seen in movies and TV programmes made during the 1990s and early 2000s. Well, sadly, it is time for me to make the jump to light speed and zoom out of here. I hope you have enjoyed this May Day and can I say to you all in my best Darth Vader voice. May the fourth be with you. This is Mr Duncan in England saying thanks for watching me, teaching you. And of course, 
Ta-ta for now. OK, I'm going to count to one septillion now. See you in a few million years time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. What comes after seventeen? No, shut up. So there it was, one of my May Day lessons from way back in 2014, a whole three years ago. And you may have noticed in that particular video towards the end, I did mention May the 4th, because that particular May Day lesson was broadcast on the 4th of May. And of course, that was yesterday. So in 2017 I wasn't making a lesson but here I am today on May the 5th so may the 5th be with you <laughs> it doesn't quite work does it thank you for joining me today my name is mr. Duncan I am now live on YouTube it is coming up towards 2 30 we all know what that means for those regular viewers you will know that it means that we are about to go live across the world wide web because it is time to open the live chat don't forget you will have a chance to type your messages live you can ask me questions about my work you can ask questions about anything really as long as it's clean and not too rude also this week some questions to ask you because i was in my hometown of stafford this week and also there it is that is my oldest device that is the oldest piece of electrical equipment that i own but how old is it i will be asking that question again later on also i had a visitor in my garden this week well not exactly in my garden but more towards the back of the garden in fact there were many new neighbors at the back of my house but what are they they are still there right now i'm not sure if they'll make an appearance today but i do have some video footage that i filmed during the week so here we go a question to ask you right now what are my new neighbors can you see one of them there hiding behind the bushes <laughs> but what is it what is my new neighbor we will be taking a look at those a little bit later on Talking of neighbours, how well do you get on with your neighbours? How do you get along with them? Do you ever talk to your neighbours? Do you ever have conversations with your neighbours? Have you ever had a fight with your neighbours? So how well do you get on with your neighbours? And this week I have had some new neighbours. Some new neighbours at the back of my house but what are they we will find out a little bit later on also a question to ask do you like going to the circus have you ever been to the circus I in my childhood used to go to the circus with my family my parents used to take me to the circus but nowadays it would appear that lots of people don't like the circus anymore they find certain practices of not all circuses but some of them to be rather cruel and inhumane so a little bit later on i will be asking you the question do you like circuses do you think they are good or do you think they are bad so that coming a little bit later on so here we go let's open the live chat it has been a week since i was here so last friday i was doing this and here i am a week later so what has been going on in your life maybe 
you can let me know and please tell me do you ever speak to your neighbors do you get on with your neighbors do you get along well or maybe sometimes perhaps you have the occasional disagreement with your neighbors you will have a chance to let me know right now because we are about to open the live chat so the live chat is now up and running who will be first on today's live chat i don't know but we are about to find out so get your fingers typing please questions today do you talk to your neighbors do you get along well with your neighbors what is your oldest electrical device my oldest electrical device is my old kettle there it is we will be seeing the kettle a little bit later on at one at, at not one o'clock three o'clock today we'll be going live into the kitchen to make a hot drink so here we go we are now on the live chat we have some people typing their messages if you would like to join in feel free it is very easy don't forget if it is your first time here today please let me know and zonic is here hello and zonic my old electrical device is a coffee grinder it is about 30 years old wow that that's very old and it's still working that's amazing so thank you very much for your message anzonic sometimes i think i can see sparks inside the machine my neighbors are adorable but they are also a little bit nosy they are busybodies that's a great expression that if someone is a busybody it means they are very nosy they are always asking about your business they are always watching you they are always gossiping they are a busybody thank you anzonic for that julie g is here hello julie eleanor eleanor coquina is here hello eleanor welcome to the live english stream for friday may the 5th Khan the Jewin is here. No, you are not first, Khan. I'm sorry about that. Mr. Duncan, I hope you had a nice weekend. I had a great week, in fact, and the weather has been quite nice. Let's have a look outside at the moment. There is the view outside in the garden. Martha is here. Hello, Martha. And also Hanau Jui. Perello, Hanau Jui Perello. Oh, Mr. Duncan, I think your new neighbours are cows. You are very near, very close. Well done. Eugene is here. Hello, Eugene. Welcome back. It has been a week since I was last live on the internet. I hope you've had a great week. Anything special happened during the last week? Oh, by Dullah. Oh, by Dullah is here. Hello to you. Welcome. Lossa is here as well. Welcome to the live chat today. Alberto is here. Mr. Duncan, your new neighbours seem to be two cows. Let's have a look, shall we? Hmm. Well, you might be right. Let's have a look. Ah. Yes, it, it looks a little bit like a cow, doesn't it? Something is hiding. In fact, it isn't just one thing. It is actually a group or should I say a herd of things? Oh. <laughs> I think I've almost given it away. But yes, I have some new neighbors at the back of my house. Some lovely animals are now living just behind my house. They arrived last weekend mr duncan it is my first time here amri najwib 
hello to Amri and welcome welcome to my f my live English lesson for a Friday afternoon good morning mr. Duncan I heard the dawn chorus today but sorry they didn't sing in your neighborhood yes I was very annoyed I woke up early this morning because I wanted to go outside to record the dawn chorus the moment when all of the birds sing as the sun rises but they didn't do it today I can't believe it hello mr. Duncan Emam Emam Mohammed says hello mr. Duncan would you please tell us about your three meals to keep fit well when I talk about keeping fit or staying healthy certainly when it comes to eating then there are certain things that I do all the time so not just at certain times of the day or during certain meals but maybe during all of my meals so for example I don't eat as much fat as I used to so I don't eat much meat anymore in fact I only eat meat once a week or maybe twice a week but for the rest of the week I don't eat meat although having said that I do eat fish which some people might say is meat but it is a lot healthier it is a healthy alternative to meat so you can have fish instead of meat so there are a couple of things that I do in my diet to keep me healthy also of course I do a lot of walking I like to stay very active I get lots of exercise every single day so that is another thing you can do to stay healthy Keen Mac says Mr. Duncan your new neighbors are cows you are very near very close Mr. Duncan this channel is amazing I am so grateful says Marcella you are welcome Marcella and welcome back I'm glad to see you here today hello teacher I am back today says son von Kablien. we haven't seen you for a long time where have you been what have you been doing mr duncan i like to watch circuses but without the animals so i suppose you mean the acrobats who like to swing in the air and do lots of interesting things with their bodies as it were but yes I, I see what you mean so anzonic like circuses but without the animals without them so you can have acrobats you can have people doing lots of different things including clowns of course do you like clowns I don't know about you but but I, I'm a little bit afraid of clowns I find them slightly scary what do you think do you like clowns I'm 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 slightly afraid of clowns I don't know why also today I am asking you about your old electrical devices do you have any electrical appliances or things that you use that you plug in to the electricity that you have had for a long time because I think now this is just my opinion I think that electrical devices and electrical appliances are not as good as they used to as they used to be so they are not made as well the quality of them is not as good as in the past so that's why I showed you my my kettle my electric kettle so I've had this kettle for a very long time but how long have I had it for I will tell you later back to the live chat mr. Duncan I love you thank you very much Andressa you are very kind very kind indeed hello mr. Duncan how are you today Natalie Hyde hello Natalie nice to see you it is my first time to join you on your Friday English lesson I am so glad that I've made it thank you Natalie I had some people asking last week by the way they said mr. Duncan we can't see the live chat 
now that is because I, I don't open it straight away I open it a little bit later on so if you are watching me now on your computer you might need to refresh the page so you need to open the page again and then hopefully you will be able to see the live chat on the side on the side of your screen it should be it should be on this side of your screen the live chat so one or two people were having difficulty last week getting in touch with me on the live chat so i hope that helps mr duncan i am toshiyuki toshiyuki from japan this week is a holiday and we call it the golden week i have been relaxing this week today i went to the circus with my sons well what a coincidence because as i mentioned earlier the circus is coming to my area as well now i'm not sure if this particular circus has animals as well because lots of circuses now do not use animals because many people consider them to be cruel so if you find a circus that has animals performing tricks sometimes not always but sometimes there is cruelty involved so that's probably the reason why do you like clowns personally i find them a, bit, a little bit scary to be honest hello mr duncan from vietnam says hang lee this is the first time to watch your english lessons it seems very useful thank you very much for that eleanor is here hello eleanor welcome i am very friendly with my neighbors yesterday i gave back a screwdriver that i borrowed from my next door neighbor we always help each other well that's very nice so you and your neighbor are very neighborly that's a great word isn't it neighborly so if you are neighborly it means you are very friendly with your neighbors the people who live nearby so you are a neighborly person neighborly i love that word jamila is here hello from algeria a big hello to algeria it's good to see you i don't like my neighbors very much but i try my best to be polite whenever i meet them thank you jamila i think sometimes sometimes it can be very difficult to get along with your neighbors sometimes not always so it sounds to me as if jamila tries to be friendly it sounds as if you try to be friendly whenever you see your neighbors so that's nice losser is here mr duncan i had an exam or i do or i will have an exam next week an oral expression exam so we have to speak and listen do you have any advice or tips to prepare well really it depends on what they ask you and it depends what the questions are but my main advice is to make sure that you concentrate on what they are saying to you so if they are asking you questions verbally listen carefully concentrate 100 percent Awan Jo says hello Mr Duncan from Vietnam I am watching you with my friend Hang Lee we are watching you together so hello to Awan Jo and also to Hang Lee as well both of you watching at the moment in Vietnam hello there Lucy is here hello Lucy Lucy is here on the live chat hello mr duncan from columbia nice to see you here today hamdi hamdi i love your name by the way hamdi tim tammy says hello mr duncan it's nice to see you again every week Ooh, so you are a 
a regular viewer thank you very much it's nice to see you someone else watching in japan hiroko ijima or lijima hiroko lijima hi how are you i am japanese nice to meet you hiroko welcome welcome to my live english stream on a friday afternoon it is now coming up to 11 minutes to three o'clock at three o'clock we will go into the kitchen to make a hot drink and i hope you will join me as well shall we go outside okay let's go outside right now because the sun is out well sometimes sometimes the sun is out so let's go outside right now and the big question is will we be looking at a flash word or a flash phrase and there it is there is the view outside it looks as if the sun has gone in unfortunately so let's go outside right now And here we are just to prove that this is live <laughs> it is now just coming up to 10 to 3 in 10 minutes time as I just mentioned we will be going into the kitchen to make a lovely drink the Sun has just come out can you see it now it's all bright and cheerful it is a beautiful day out here I must say here we go then here is a buzzword and also a flash word as well can you see it now some people pronounce this word as hyperbole or some people pronounce it as hyperbole so it is up to you really <laughs> hyperbole is an English noun the word hyperbole or hyperbole is an English noun that means an exaggerated statement or claim that is not meant to be taken literally people did not realize that most of what I said was hyperbole an overstatement of intention is hyperbole or hyperbole <laughs> if we look be beyond the hyperbole the plans have no substance some people in authority tend to speak hyperbolically Trump's hyperbole Bowl on immigration certainly got the attention of both the electorate and the media yes this is a very topical it's a very topical word this an exaggerated statement or comment a heavily worded speech or essay that uses words in a heavy-handed way might be described as hyperbole or hyperbole so there it is today's first flash word and it is also a buzzword as well because many people at the moment are talking all about politics and hyperbole is something that a lot of people have been coming out with It is so bright outside it is a very bright and sunny day it is also very windy as well <laughs> to come out with something if you come out with something it means you say something you come out and say it 
so we can say that you come out and say something or he came out with it or she came out with it it means that person said something they said something quite often we use it to describe something that's been said that is very surprising he just came out with it mr duncan that's my name your lessons always hit the spot for me thank you very much hello sir how are you i hope you are fine i treat my neighbor very well i'm always talking with them very politely says unique aziz thank you very much for that thank you and isn't it nice when you get along with your neighbors if you get along with your neighbors if you are very friendly towards your neighbor and maybe your neighbor is very friendly towards you things are so much nicer don't you think hello i always talk to my neighbors every day it is my pleasure wow so many people now <laughs> thank you salah for that hamdi says mr duncan could you recommend me a methodology teaching book well there are many on the market i'm not really here to promote certain products i have mentioned certain books in the past but i wouldn't um, i wouldn't like to sit here now recommending certain products antonella antonella is here right now mr duncan i am very grateful as i teach english and you empower us oh thank you very much thank you antonella for saying that thank you well i think teachers all have something to offer and quite often teachers can help other teachers i think so eugene it seems that your new neighbors are bulls i see you can say bulls or maybe bullocks so are the mystery animals at the back of my house what are they are they bullocks are they bulls or are they cows find out a little bit later on ho huang is here hello teacher and hello to you mahmood says i like acrobats in the circus but i hate to see the animals used badly i agree with you they are they are kept for a long time without food to make them obey yes i think that is one of the ways that circuses train their animals to perform so sometimes they will not feed them and then give them food if they perform a certain trick and also sometimes they will use punishment as well so no i'm not a fan of that i don't like that either so i agree with you mahmood vo huang i think i've just said hello to you hello again and to Don is here mr duncan we have many vintage 1960s lamps in our home recently i discovered online that one of them is very collectible and very very valuable <gasps> antidon you should get that insured you should maybe insure that especially if it's valuable definitely hassan is here hassan says hello to mr duncan i am watching you from kenya thank you you are great thank you very much hassan for that you are welcome and of course i am here to help you with your english and of course the live stream is here for you to to listen to english being spoken so i still get some people asking mr duncan why do you do the live stream for two hours well i think that doing it for two hours gives everyone a chance to have some sort of english environment around them so if you listen to my whole english stream for two hours then lots of the english words lots of the english that you hear will hopefully stay in your head hopefully you will remember some of the things that i've said 
Hamoda, Hamoda. Hello, Mr. Duncan. Thanks for the advice. How we can learn English. But can you explain who you can say opportunities? When I say opportunities, I suppose from my point of view, I mean opportunities to meet other people, maybe to practice your English with or maybe opportunities to discover new things or new ways of learning. Alberto, I have always felt pity for clowns. I know I don't like clowns. I think clowns are a little bit scary. Can you see that guy there? He looks a bit scary. I don't know why. I am slightly, slightly afraid of clowns. <laughs> Should I be embarrassed by that? Should I be worried that I'm afraid of clowns? <laughs> but they, they do look a bit scary, don't you think? <laughs> Some people say the same thing about me. Hello from Qatar, says Adam's family. Oh, I can see what you've done there. Long Najuan. Hello, Mr. Duncan. How are you doing today from Norway? Hello to Norway. I am doing well today. I've had a very busy morning getting everything ready for today's live stream. Very busy. Natalie Hyde. Hello, Mr. Duncan. I'm just OK with my neighbours. I mean, I say good morning to them and that's all. I only have very good relations with one of my neighbours because they are my best friend. Oh, thank you, Natalie. So at least you have one neighbour who you get along with. So I think that's a good thing. Well done. I will continue with the live chat, but now we must go into the kitchen. It is time to go into the kitchen to make a drink because it's three o'clock. Let's go. I must say it is very nice to be back with you on a Friday afternoon. Did you miss me over the past week? I think so, perhaps. I had some complaints about last Friday's live English stream because I didn't do my three o'clock tea break. So today I thought I would put that right by having my three o'clock tea break. And here it is right now. So what are you having to drink? Are you having something nice today? I hope so. Today I'm going to have, yes, you've guessed it, I'm going to have some good old fashioned tea. I have my cup ready. There it is, my lovely colourful cup. What does your cup look like? What does the cup that you drink your tea or coffee from look like? What is its appearance? Maybe you could send me a photograph of your teacup or coffee cup, the one that you use regularly, your favourite teacup or coffee cup. Please send it to me today. Go on. <laughs> so first of all, as usual, we have to put the kettle on. Can you see this kettle? This kettle is very very old. Now one of the questions I've asked today is what is the oldest electrical appliance or device that you own? What is it? How long have you had it for? Now this kettle, I have had this kettle for many many years but can you guess how long I have had it for? I bought this kettle many years ago a very long time ago because during the week I went to see my mother and last year uh, I bought a lovely new kettle for my mum and can you believe already 
It is broken down. It has gone kaput. But this kettle here, I bought this many, many years ago. Can you guess how old this kettle is? So now I have filled my lovely trusty kettle up. There it is. Can you see it? Only a little water because I'm only making tea for me. So there it is. The kettle is now on. And yes, I am going to put a lot of sugar in my tea. Only two spoons of sugar today because I'm feeling very good. <laughs> and of course, I will get the milk ready. I have the milk on standby. <gasps> it's such a glorious day here in England. I hope the weather is okay where you are. Did you see what I did then? I nearly put the milk in first, but of course, most people like to put the milk in after the water. So I put the water in first and then I add the milk. Some other questions today. Do you like circuses? Now, over the past few years, circuses have become very unpopular, mainly due to the fact that quite a few of them are cruel. To animals or at least they have been discovered to have been cruel to animals. So what do you think? Do you think circuses are a good thing? Have you ever been to a circus? Now I remember many years ago I went to a circus with my parents and I always remember at the end they went around taking pictures of the audience and you could have a picture taken holding a very baby lion, an actual lion, a baby lion. I'm not joking. So a little baby lion you can actually have your photograph taken with. I don't think that happens anymore though. <laughs> I can already hear people asking, Mr. Duncan, What's the difference between the pronunciation of lion and line? So I hope you can hear the difference. So lion and line, line, lion. There is a difference, honestly. So now I will brew the tea. So we have to wait for a few seconds for the tea to brew. What are you having today? Are you having something nice? If you just joined me, it's Mr. Duncan on YouTube live for a Friday afternoon. Yes, I'm back, baby. Of course, I have had some complaints. People have said, Mr. Duncan, we miss you on Tuesday. Why don't you do Tuesday and Friday? Because we miss you so much. I'm very touched by your messages, by the way. Now, the reason why I did two during April was just as a special treat. But of course, now we have returned to just one live stream each week. But who knows? Who knows what will happen next month? Mm, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I'm dunking my tea bag. <laughs> so there it is. Shlunk. I think my tea is ready. 
So, we just put a bit of milk in. And give it a good stir. And of course, I mustn't forget to put the milk back in the fridge. There is nothing worse than milk that is gone sour. So there we have it. Today's refreshing cup of tea at three o'clock. What are you having? Are you having something nice? And don't forget to send me your photographs of your favourite cup or mug. Yes, we're going back into the studio now. And we are back. <laughs> oh, I am running around today like a, a blue bottomed fly. I had to clean that up, by the way. I can't say arse, you see. <laughs> They won't let me. <laughs> so, what are you drinking now? What are you drinking? I'm having my tea, as you can see. And... Cool, blimey. That's hot. So, what are you drinking today? And what are you drinking your tea in? Do you have a favourite cup or a favourite mug? So, this is my favourite cup. I've had this cup for many years. And it is very very cherished so this is my cherished cup <laughs> i would be heartbroken heartbroken and devastated if anything bad happened to this mug so i always treat this cup very carefully i always put it away safely so it doesn't get broken so do you have a favorite cup or a favorite mug something you like to drink from when you have a hot drink maybe you could send me a photograph is that a good idea so i have my phone here ready to take your email so please send me an email there it is you can see it just down there there is my email address at the bottom so perhaps you can send me a photograph of your favorite cup the thing that you like to drink your tea or maybe your coffee from and of course if you have a very old electrical device something that you've had for many years maybe you can send me a photograph of that as well so earlier we had a look at my kettle we saw it just in the kitchen my kettle is very old but how old is my kettle so there it is my trusty kettle can you guess <laughs> I know I'm asking a lot of questions today. Can you guess where this kettle was made? Which country it was made? I think you'll be quite surprised to find out where it was made. And also, I think you'll be very shocked to find out how old this kettle is. And it still works perfectly. It still works as well and as good as the day I first bought it. So any electrical appliance. So an electrical appliance. It's a great word that appliance, something that is useful, something that you that carries out a task of some sort is an appliance to apply is to do or carry out or, or to expect something to happen. It is an appliance appliance to do something. Mr. Duncan, this is David from Tenerife in Spain. I love your lessons. Thank you, David Calero. Thank you very much. Trung Nguyen is here watching in Vietnam, I think. 
Eleanor, my son's best friend is a son of my next door neighbor and they have been growing up together. So you have a very strong connection with one of your neighbors. That's great. Thank you, Eleanor, for that. Gabby is here. Hello, Gabby. Hi from Brazil. I love your lessons. You are welcome. Thank you very much. Rashid is watching in Morocco at the moment. Thanks for joining me today. Friday afternoon. It is May the 5th, 2017. Alberto Marhaban to all the people from the Arabic speaking countries who are watching Mr. Duncan Maharban. Lossa is here as well saying Maharban as well. Oh, I see quite a lot of people saying that. Can I say it as well? Maharban. Did I pronounce it right? I'm sure you will let me know. Ching Naji says hello, Mr. Duncan from Hong Kong. Hello from the Ukraine, from you, Rousseau. Hello to you as well. And a big hello to the Ukraine. Hello. I am also from Ukraine as well. Duriam Durik. Wow. A lot of people watching in Ukraine today. Hello from Tokyo, says Jun Matsubara. Hello, Jun. And a big hello to everyone watching in Japan. Wow. I have people watching all around the world at the moment. It's very exciting, I have to say. Nguyen Hong is here. The oldest electrical appliance we still keep in our house is an iron. Ah, for ironing your clothes, I see. It still works perfectly, though it is being used although it has been used for more than two decades so your iron is over 20 years old that's incredible wow thank you very much deborah mancini says hello mr duncan what do you think about listening during sleep this is something i've mentioned before and i i think there is some benefit not a hundred percent now i think it is possible to learn things whilst sleeping you can listen to something using headphones so maybe you can listen to another language that you are learning if you are learning another language it can be any language it doesn't have to be english and you could use a tape or maybe your computer or your ipod and you can play something whilst you sleep so yes i think there is there is some validity but i'm not sure it's if it's a hundred percent but i think it can be helpful so if you want to listen to something while sleeping maybe not a hundred percent but i think it can be of benefit maybe you can listen to my live stream for two hours whilst sleeping Nguyen t says mr duncan i love your accent thank you very much <laughs> although i don't talk like the queen a lot of people say that i sound like the queen honestly i don't sound like the queen hello this is the queen of england here are you having a good day one hopes so vandy lee is here hello to all from hong kong from russia we have quite a few people watching at the moment in russia la gel is here bonsoir monsieur duncan thank you very much i think that was french of course this weekend we have the the final election taking place for the new leader of france who will it be this time next week we will know Hello, dear teacher. I am watching you in Greece. Mano Lissil is watching now from Greece. A big hello to you. I have been to Greece in the past. I have been to the, the beautiful island of Corfu. Oh, very beautiful. Very nice. 
Hassan Abdi is watching in Kenya. Thank you very much for saying hello again. Owan Najo says, Mr. Duncan, I talk to my neighbour usually because they are my cousin. That's very interesting. So you live next door to one of your relatives. I like that. Julie G is watching. My neighbour. <laughs> my neighbour. I don't know which one steals my leaflets from my letterbox. Sometimes he or she gives it back after several days, but sometimes not. When you say leaflets, do you mean letters? Because in in this country, it is actually a crime to steal other people's post. So if you if you go into someone's letterbox and steal their letters, it is actually a crime here in the UK. Sally B says, hello, Mr. Duncan. Thank you for your useful lessons and the time you have given us. Well, I do give everything away for free. Everything you see is free of charge, including this. But of course, you are more than welcome to make a donation. You can make a donation on Patreon. And also you can make a live donation today on the live chat if you do so wish to. Because don't forget, I do all of this for free. All of my time I give for free. I make my lessons for free. I post them on YouTube for free. So everything is given away. Vanilo, Vanildo says, hello, Mr. Duncan. How are you? I'm great today because the weather is super. Hey, Mr. Duncan says Gideon. Hello, Gideon and welcome. Welcome to my live chat today. Victor, Mr. Duncan. Nice to see you. The, this part of your garden is very beautiful. Thank you very much. We will be going outside again in a few moments. Let's have a look at an excerpt from one of my full English lessons. This is taken from full English number 19. And in it, I discuss many different subjects. A oh, little floater in my eye. There you go, floating by. Why do you never stay a while? Always too shy to show your smile. Oh, little floater in my peripheral view. How often I've tried to look at you. But I know that you are very shy. Because when I look your way, you run and hide. Is a word that when looked at appears unreal this word is a real word but its appearance seems odd as it contains many consonants the word is unbeknownst this word is a British variation of unbeknown they both have the same definition which is to be unaware of certain information to do something without being seen by anybody an unknown thing is unbeknownst or unbeknown. Without knowledge is unbeknownst. An action that has taken place but is not known about is unbeknownst to someone. The word itself is a variation of the now archaic and no longer used word be known. Whenever we talk about the things we have done in the past in English, there are certain words we must use to show that this is so. Using past tense may seem confusing, but with practice it is quite easy to master. If we are talking about something we did in the past but no longer do now, then we say used to. 
I used to travel by bus. I used to belong to a rock band. I used to trust you. We are clearly showing that something we did in the past is no longer done. We can also show that something was done in the past for a certain period of time. In this case, we can use did. I did yoga for a few months last year. I did some voluntary work last summer. We use the word went when talking about past movements or travel. I went to Turkey for my holiday. I went to visit my friends in Scotland. Other words include always and have. I always stay with my friends at Christmas. I have always taken care of myself. I have always been keen on nature. In these sentences, we are showing that the habit is still continuing. It is still going on. You have not stopped doing it. Here's a good example of an English word that is often used incorrectly. The word paraphrase is one that is often misused. It is on occasion placed within a sentence by mistake. To paraphrase something means to change the wording of a sentence so as to make it clearer. To emphasize the meaning of something might require you to paraphrase. You reword a sentence so as to make it appear more clear. Teachers often paraphrase sentences so as to allow their students to recognize the important points of a subject. To express something in as clear a way as possible might require some paraphrasing to take place. Even here in my English lessons, I often paraphrase so as to ensure that my explanations come across as clearly as they can. Many people believe that to paraphrase is to shorten a sentence. This is not true. To emphasize and clarify a sentence is to paraphrase. The word originates from the Greek word para, which means modification, and phrasen, which means tell. Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm moving these empty plastic bottles to the recycling box at the back of my house. They will then be collected by the local recycling plant and taken to a place where they will be melted down and reused. To recycle is the process of reusing something over and over. These days recycling is carried out all around the world. Almost anything can be recycled. The most commonly recycled materials include water, paper and plastic. Many electrical devices can now be recycled too. Most metallic objects are also recyclable, from discarded cans right up to disused cars. Many things these days can be recycled. We often hear the word sustainable used when discussing recycling. This word refers to the action of maintaining a balance between the use and replacement of materials needed for the manufacturing of everyday items. Sustainable forests and sustainable oceans being the two most common places where things such as wood, gas and oil are found. I haven't mentioned any proverbs for a long time, so today I would like to put this right. Here is a great proverb. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is a great way of expressing that if something works fine and is running smoothly with no problems, then don't make any changes to it. 
do not make changes to something if it is already okay. It is very tempting to alter something just for the sake of it, just for something to do. It would appear that the human condition is to always look for problems, even when there are none to find. So, if you decide to make changes to something that is already working smoothly, then don't be too surprised if someone approaches you and says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it works okay, just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's a great proverb that I love it. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was an excerpt taken from one of my full English lessons. The lessons are complete and unedited on my YouTube channel. Full English lessons one to twenty five and later this year i am hoping to make some new full english lessons don't forget on my youtube channel there are over 500 videos many english lessons on my youtube channel and of course you can catch up with my live streams as well in case you missed them any of them they are all there on my youtube channel so we have had an email come through on the phone from Toshi Toshiyiki Toshiyiki watching in Japan so let's have a look I asked you to send me a photograph of your favorite cup or mug so there is my favorite cup this is the cup that I always have my coffee and tea in so there it is my lovely cup <laughs> and here is Toshiyiki who I think is watching in Japan so there is Toshiyiki's mug it's a lovely cup a very friendly looking character I think that is a well-known character in Japan Rika Rika Kuma I think it says or Rila Rila Kuma a well-known character very cute looking it's not Hello Kitty before anyone says so. It isn't Hello Kitty. That's that's another character altogether. Back to the live chat. Lev is here. Hello, Lev. Thanks for joining me today. I am saying a big hello from Israel. Thank you very much. And it's nice to see you here today. Thank you very much. It's a windy day here, even though the sun is out. It's very windy so there it is a live view outside at the moment that is what the weather is doing right now the Sun is out again <laughs> it keeps going in behind the clouds in Greece we rarely put milk in the tea says Manolis Manolisil so we rarely put milk in the tea in Greece I have been to Greece and I know for a fact that if you go to some of the restaurants they will serve the tea black so without the milk so yes I think you are right well of course you're right because you live there Natalie says mr. Duncan I used to have a favorite cup it was a Star Wars cup but now it's broken there's nothing worse than breaking something that you love uh, be it a cup or maybe something special or unique maybe a little statue or a vase something that breaks easily something that you treasure and then one day it's broken uh, there's nothing worse if you want to send me a photograph of your cup or your mug please feel free and do you get along with your neighbors that is one of the questions I'm asking today how do you get on with your neighbors do you get along with them are your neighbors friendly are you friends with your neighbors I always think that it's best 
to get along with your neighbours because maybe one day you will need them to help you with some situation maybe inside your house you might fall down the stairs or have an accident and then you will need your neighbours to help you so I always think it is a good idea to stay friendly with your neighbours because you never know one day you might need them and they might need you mr duncan my mug is almost one liter in capacity so your mug holds one liter that is a big cup of tea thank you victor for that and your big cup <laughs> i love it la gel says in a world full of lions and tigers entertaining the masses have you ever seen a wolf performing in a circus i have never seen a wolf perform in a circus never definitely not mr duncan i think your kettle is made in china thank you peter let's have a look so there it is there is my old kettle but where was it made and how old is it so this is probably my oldest electrical device i've had it for many years so how old is it you can see that it doesn't look very stylish it doesn't look very modern it does look a little old-fashioned it's made by a company called philips who were around and well they were very popular in the 1970s and 1980s let's go back to the live chat don't forget you can send me your photographs to my email address the email address is just there can you see it just there <coughs> any more email messages not at the moment nothing new okay if you want to send me a photograph of one of your cups or mugs maybe something that you have owned for a long time so for example here is my cup i have had this for many years or perhaps you have an electrical device an electrical appliance that you've owned for many years perhaps you could send a photograph of that as well mr duncan i think your cup your kettle your kettle was made in the netherlands no it wasn't Hamoda, hi. Why, ha, why do you put your WhatsApp number? This is easy. Uh, I think you mean WhatsApp. I don't use WhatsApp. I don't use it. That's why. That's why I don't have a WhatsApp number because I don't use WhatsApp. I think your kettle was made in China, says Kenneth and also peter says china as well no no it it was not made in china this is nawaf from saudi arabia and hello to mr duncan hello nawaf who is now watching in saudi arabia i had some new neighbors this week because today we are talking all about neighbors i had a new neighbor in fact i had many new neighbors this week would you like to have a look at my new neighbors okay let's have a look right now
so there they are some new neighbors at the back of my house quite a few people guessed correctly mr duncan are they bulls do you now have some bulls at the back of your house yes i do and there they are can you see them aren't they lovely they are so cute i love the one with the brown around its eyes oh and look can you see that that bull it's having a scratch there's something i've noticed about cows and also bulls they do like scratching so <laughs> i think I think they must get very itchy during the day so there at the back of my house my new neighbors they joined me last weekend the farmer came to the field and he he left these lovely animals behind <laughs> aren't they cute <sighs> oh, there they are look having a little scratch there's nothing worse than having an itch that you can't get to so there they are scratching getting rid of their itches i don't know why i've noticed that cows and sheep yes sheep as well they also get very itchy <laughs> aren't they beautiful so lovely So well done to all those who correctly guessed that my new neighbors are a herd of bulls. They are actually very young bulls. They're not very old. Now, <laughs> this is something that I hate talking about. I don't like to talk about this particular subject, but every year there are new animals at the back of the house. Sometimes there are sheep but more often than not quite often there are bulls now the farmer who puts the bulls in the field allows the bulls to to eat and to grow and to get large and sadly after that he sells them for slaughter so that's the hard bit that's the hard part now i always try to resist i always try not to get too attached to the animals at the back of my house especially the bulls because i know that they will eventually be sent away they will eventually be sent off to be slaughtered for meat so whatever your view is whatever your point of view is about meat whether it's good to eat animals or not that is uh, a fact of life that some people do eat meat so those poor little bulls that you saw in the garden uh, at the back of the house just now a year from now they will be sent to market so maybe not this year I think they're too young at the moment but next year so we might see them next year so they might still be alive next year hopefully let's keep our fingers crossed shall we so there they are the new visitors the new neighbors to my <laughs> at the back of my house mr duncan 
at my home i don't have a favorite cup but my grandmother's home i do have one thank you lev for that so you don't have a favorite cup at your house but at your grandmother's you do hello mr duncan i am arash from afghanistan but now i live in the united kingdom in liverpool hello to you and a big hello to everyone watching in liverpool because i know i have some students who are watching my videos and they do live in liverpool deborah says is your kettle made in italy no it is not it isn't pedro massa mr duncan <laughs> the photo on your wall behind you of the rocket you mean that and the explosion is that a reference to the us and north korea maybe maybe not mahmoud or Mah mahmoud yes i got it right the first time mahmoud i think your kettle was made about 25 years ago let's have a look so there is my kettle it is a very old electrical appliance but how old is it so thank you mahmoud for your guess mugala is watching in india at the moment hello mugala and welcome uh, of course i have people watching all around the world so many countries watching my youtube lessons can you see them all so many countries around the world watching me they are watching my youtube videos and of course my live streams as well i am here every friday from 2 p.m uk time you can catch me on youtube live every friday from 2 p.m uk time i am here for just another 15 minutes oh mr duncan it's not fair hello mr duncan i really love your lessons we are very close with our neighbors uh, and we are like a family isn't that nice i like that we always share the afternoon drinking tea together says lena john thank you very much so some neighbors are very close they they see each other every day whilst others are very distant they they don't talk to each other i'm very lucky because my neighbors are quite friendly so on one side i have some lovely neighbors and on the other side i also have a very friendly neighbor as well so i'm very lucky trung Najuan says i think your kettle was made in china no it was not it wasn't made in china arash says mr duncan why don't you read my message i thought i did did i read your message earlier i thought i did anyway hello arash don't worry i am not ignoring you paz la pay says hola mr duncan from spain we we like the sun in the sky oh <laughs> you meaning me are like the sun in the sky thank you for existing isn't that nice thank you very much paz thank you that's very kind of you i'm very very moved by your comment thank you very much deborah mr duncan i'm a nerd of the kettle and i have a beautiful russell hobbs limited edition kettle so in other words you are you are very keen on kettles do you collect them is it your hobby thank you deborah kandaka is here as well thank you kandaka for saying hello on this lovely friday afternoon sard has written to say that my exam paper did not go well today i'm afraid that i will fail 
and perhaps I will have to wait for one year to re-attempt it. Well, we will have to wait and see. Cora is in Morocco and it is your first time here. Hello Cora and welcome, welcome to my lovely live English stream. Everyone, and I mean everyone, is welcome. Munir, Munir is watching today. I am very happy to watch you Mr Duncan. That's okay and you are very welcome to watch me as well. Ben Lahuchini says hello. Hello Ben. Can I call you Ben? Is that okay? I hope so. Mr Duncan, was your kettle made in Germany? So there it is, my very old kettle. I've had this kettle for many years and it still works perfectly. It still works brilliantly. It is in perfect condition. It hasn't broken once. So how many years have I had my kettle? Mr Duncan. Masood says you also didn't read my message. Masood, I, I don't ignore people. Honestly, I don't. I don't like to ignore people. Sometimes I miss the messages because the live stream and the live chat moves very quickly, very fast indeed. Mr Duncan, you are my inspiration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruca, for your lovely message. I do appreciate. I love it when you write to me. I love hearing from you. It always makes my day very happy and of course it makes everything I do worthwhile. Mr Duncan, how did your live lesson work? Do we have to ask random questions or do you always have a specific topic? Nemanja, it is actually everything. So sometimes I talk about certain topics or certain subjects. Maybe sometimes we look at some of my English lessons and of course sometimes you will ask me questions as well. So anything you want really, anything you want. Hi from Egypt, what is your advice for me to learn American accent or British accent? I cannot tell you what you should do. Uh, it is your choice. It is your choice. Which one do you prefer? Which one do you prefer? It's up to you. I think your kettle is older than me, says Cora. Maybe it is. You might be right there. <laughs> Mr Duncan, I wrote that your kettle might be 22 or maybe 25 years old. You are not very far off. Natalie, thank you Natalie for that. Jean-Pierre is here. Hello from Brazil. I love the way you teach. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at one of my Ask Mr Duncan lessons before we go. We only have another 10 minutes. So here is an excerpt from one of my Ask Mr Duncan lessons. And this is available on my YouTube channel along with many other English lessons as well. Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. Here I am, all relaxed and calm after last week's terrible drama when my video editing computer decided to die on me just as I was making last week's edition of Ask Mr Duncan. Fortunately, I still have my little laptop. So a big cheer for my laptop. OK, that's enough. I have some of your email questions and comments to read out again. So without any more.
Waiting for that, let's have our first question for today. Is it better to learn English through watching movies with or without subtitles? This interesting question comes from Rodrigo Markatich, who lives in Argentina. As you are no doubt aware, I use subtitles in all of my lessons. They act as a guide for those who have a basic grasp of English and now wish to advance further. While watching a movie, you will find subtitles useful for getting used to the fast pace of English speech and dialogue and accustomed to the many different accents which exist in English. Some people find certain American accents hard to follow. Subtitles allow you to closely study the words on the screen as they are spoken. Subtitles serve a very important role and are an invaluable tool for those adjusting to the faster paced delivery of English. After a while, you can start listening to the words without the subtitles and see how much you can understand. While watching my lessons, you can cover or hide the subtitles or just simply listen to the sound. Test yourself regularly. This is not a quick solution and just like any other learning exercise, it will take time. So to answer your question, subtitles are very useful and they do provide a great aid to those who really want to improve their English listening and comprehension skills. So there it was, an excerpt from one of my Ask Mr. Duncan lessons and they are available to view on my YouTube channel. Just in case you don't know what the channel's name is, there it is, there is the address. There is now no excuse for not knowing where you can find all of my lessons. I have had quite a few emails come through. I'm not going to have a chance to read all of these. I should warn you now, so please don't complain. <laughs> Deborah. Hello, Deborah. Deborah has sent me a photograph of her mug. Let's have a look. So here is Deborah's favourite cup. <laughs> Eventually. It's downloading you see do 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 very slow i have a horrible feeling that my phone is going to be very slow oh i like this yes this is very good so here is there we go i like that look at that life is like riding a bike to keep your balance you must keep moving oh, i do like that that's a lovely expression as well if you don't mind me saying that's great so there it is a mug with an expression on the front i like that thank you deborah for that let's have a look at two more i've had lots come through i can't look at all of them i'm very sorry please don't shout at me Fas Faisal has sent two pictures. Let's have a look, shall we? These are two of my most favourite cups. Oh, yes. Actually, they look very delicate, if you don't mind me saying. They look very fragile. Especially the one on the right. Look at that, isn't that? Aren't they beautiful? I, d I do like the one. I do like the one on the right. That's very beautiful. So there are a couple from Faisal. Thank you very much for that. And I do, I, I'm very attracted to the one on the right. That looks very beautiful. It looks very old, maybe very valuable. I don't know. Thank you very much. So these are your favourite cups. It's a very interesting subject. <laughs> and now, now Yate. Now Yate Hutu has also sent a picture. Mr. Duncan, this is my favourite mug on which a very beautiful Chinese calligraphy is printed, which means people from far, far away in this world are all related to me. This proverb inspires me a lot. And that comes from Now Yate, Now Yate Hutu, or should I say nils? There it is. Let's have a look. 
let's see if we can get close to that <laughs> it's disappeared now typical there it is very nice so there is the mug can you see it and it has on the side a Chinese proverb so however far away people are we are all related I love that yes that's a nice expression I like that as well very interesting and let's have a look at one more Matthias Matthias says Mr Duncan I have attached my favorite mug it is from the place in which I work let's have a look Matthias let's have a look at your mug before we finish did, did. my phone is very slow today I apologize faster faster quite 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 that's what they say in Chinese you see Chinese for faster hurry up hurry up okay I don't know why this one isn't loading <laughs> it doesn't want to load come on I have to go in a moment okay I don't know why that's not opening let's try again please open please come on lovely phone please open the photograph for me here it comes <laughs> oh yes very interesting there it is I'm not sure if that's a mug or a cup it looks like a cup to me maybe a, a, a glass cup what does it say though does it say British maybe it says British I don't know that's very nice thank you very much for that thank you Matthias for that I'm sorry if I didn't show yours but we are sadly running out of time it is almost time to go so how old is my kettle my kettle is do, 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 26 years old I kid you not this kettle is 26 years old I bought it many 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 years ago so there it is still working perfectly and where was it made that was the other question I asked it was made in Poland I don't know if that's surprising but that particular kettle was made in Poland and it has been working perfectly it still works perfectly after 26 years <sighs> incredible so that is the answer to the question how old was mr. Duncan's kettle so now you know back to the live chat it's almost time to say goodbye we are just approaching four o'clock in fact we have just passed four o'clock just slightly mr. Duncan sadly we've got to feed ourselves oh I see is this in reference to the animals at the back of my house that eventually will <coughs> go for slaughter yes I think so many people like eating meat including me uh, I do eat meat not always but I must admit I do rather like eating meat hi from Egypt what is your best oh I think I've read that one already about whether to speak with American or British accent it is up to you Ben Lahuchini says Mr Duncan you can say Ben it's okay thank you very much for that it is almost time for me to go Mr Duncan what are you doing at the weekend well tomorrow of course I will be going into town to have my usual lunch on a Saturday you're welcome to join me just in case you feel like it <laughs> 26 years old Mr Duncan I can't be I can't believe your kettle is 26 years old oh my goodness Mr Duncan says Petchy your kettle is older than me yes but not older than me unfortunately 
it was made in 1991 a very very long time ago that's when I bought it I bought it all those years ago in 1991 Mr Duncan why did you ignore me I like your lessons very much via Cheslav has written that I, I haven't ignored you honestly I don't ignore people sometimes I miss your name maybe from the live chat but I don't ignore people so can I just put that right Mr Duncan I don't believe that Philips is a very well-known brand from the Netherlands but Philips Cucina is from China yes but that particular kettle that I just showed you was made in Poland this kettle is <laughs> Thank you very much. This kettle is half as old as you are, Mr. Duncan. Thank you, Matthew, for that. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Older than me as well, says Ahmed. Yes, it's a very old kettle. Mr. Duncan, I was so close with the age about the kettle, but my answer, Poland, was correct. Did you say Poland? I didn't see that. Oh, OK, then. Thank you, Natalie, for that. It is time for me to go. We have gone five minutes past the finish time. So it is time for me to say goodbye. I hope you've enjoyed the past hour or should I say two hours and five minutes. I have been here since two o'clock. Don't forget, I am back next Friday next friday 2 p.m uk time every friday i am live for two hours next week we will have the mystery idioms next week i will show you them now shall i show you them now but these are the mystery idioms that i will be showing you next week but let's have a little look at them now here they come so there is the first mystery idiom and there is the second one so those are the mystery idioms for next friday but the big question is what are they i'm going now thank you very much see you martha bye edward bye saturino bye vandy goodbye to Lossa, sally thank you for your wonderful lesson la gel thank you you are very welcome no problem it is my my pleasure your kettle is very robust robust i love that word robust something that's very solid and strong it is hard to damage your break is very robust I love that. I will see you next week. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of the English language saying bye from a very sunny England. And there is the view at the moment. That is actually the live view outside. I didn't have a chance to say or to give you another flash word today. We ran out of time, unfortunately. I'm very sorry about that. I hope you will join me next Friday. I will be with you again to do this all over again. Can you believe it? So I hope you will join me next Friday. This is Mr. Duncan saying thanks for watching me talking to you live. And of course, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Ta-ta for now.